Deception Island volcano of Antarctica just doesn't make any sense to geologists who don't know why it's there. As we know, Antarctica has over a hundred volcanoes. And this is just one of the images of people swimming in the warm waters of Deception Island volcano. This is how warm it is there. And we're talking about Antarctica. This doesn't seem to be reality, but that's what is going on there. This is by conversation. Luca de Siena, lecturer in Geophysics, University of Aberdeen, and David McDonald, Professor of Petroleum Geology, University of Aberdeen, on the conversation. Only two volcanoes in Antarctica are active. There is Mount Erebus, which is roughly due south of New Zealand, and Deception Island, which lies about 850 kilometers southeast of Cape Horn. Mount Erebus has been erupting continuously over the last few decades. Yet the rather smaller Deception Island volcano in the South Shetland Archipelago is responsible for the largest known eruption in the Antarctica area. This horseshoe-shaped cauldron-like structure, or caldera, was produced more than 10,000 years ago by an explosive eruption that scattered more than 30 kilometers of molten rock. The result is an enclosed welcoming bay called Port Foster. Deception Island volcano was officially discovered by the British sealing captain William Smith in 1820 and was subsequently used for, the purp for purposes such as seal hunting and whaling before finding its modern calling as a site for science and tourism. Maybe because you cannot see most of the volcano above the sea, tourists rarely appreciate this hidden destructive potential. The Big Blunder Claiming in the past, claimed in the past by the United Kingdom, Chile, and Argentina, it provides a unique enclosed environment in which to monitor a volcano under the ice. All three of those aforementioned countries, UK, Chile, and Argentina, financed observations observatories there in 1960. Spain added its own into the year 2000. Yet two consecutive Volcanic eruptions in 1967 and 1969 went unpredicted. Remarkable failures in the history of volcano monitoring. They could not predict these eruptions. Only the Argentinian and Spanish observatories still exist. Mud flow from down below. The volcanic events at Deception Island volcano fall into a rare category called subglacial eruptions. The island is situated in a place where there is a glacier on the ocean floor about 100 meters thick, that's three, about over 300 feet thick. Scientists would normally expect that if this were hit by lava from below, it would evaporate benignly into steam. But the lava moving upward at deception has several qualities that made things happen differently. It moves slowly and it has high water content. This means that it turned the glacier into meltwater as well as steam, creating a large overflow of mud to the surface. This was the main cause of the destruction of the UK and Chilean stations. The reason why this melting was unexpected was because, in scientific terms, the glacier was, quote, deceptively thin, end quote. The scientists were not expecting it to produce much more than steam. Ironically, the absence of larger glaciers is what made the island the most hospitable location in Antarctica. We understand these subglacial eruptions much better now than we did in the uh, 1960s. Nowadays, there are hazard maps to make visitors aware of their higher risk spots on the island. The Deception Island Volcano Enigma. Yet from a volcanic point of view, deception is a great puzzle. Many volcanoes are caused by subduction, which is where two of the Earth's tectonic plates crash against one another, sending one plate down and pushing the other one upwards. A classic example is the Cascade Range in the northwestern United States, whose most famous volcano is Mount St. Helens, the ones that scientists have observed happen on land. Most volcanoes at sea are like Hawaii and the Azores, which is in the Atlantic, which, are, uh, which, which we describe as hotspots. Instead of taking place near the points between tectonic plates, 
these are holes in the ocean floor where there is a direct line to the Earth's mantle. The same goes for submerged calderas in the middle of the ocean, of which there are some examples near Japan. For a time, scientists thought that deception might be an unusual example of subduction happening in the ocean, but a more recent hypothesis is that the South Shetlands may be what we call a rift zone. This would mean that it is on a point where plates meet, but instead of colliding, there are gaps from them moving away from each other, creating new oceanic crust in the process. A good example of a rift zone is the Iceland, as can be seen in, the, uh, in pictures and videos. The hydrocarbon connection. Detailed geophysical surveys have been carried out across Deception Island volcanoes since the year 2000, mainly financed by Spanish projects. UK geological research on the island has also been extensive. You may be wondering why governments have spent so much on research there. Don't be fooled into thinking that this is some kind of place of virtue where different natures fund research just to understand how our Earth works. Rifts fill up with the remains of volcanic explosions and other sediments eroded from margins of the valley. And this process is critical for the production of oil. Rift zone, oil. Located in the western edge of the arc, of the arc deception is the ideal place to observe rift processes because of the natural harbor, which shelters scientists from harsh Antarctic weather. Rifting is the reason for all the oil in the North Sea. The oil is not deposited where the rift is located, but some distance away. In the same way, there is almost no likelihood of any oil discovery on deception, but understanding the process of rifting, there will be a strong indication that there is oil in the north of the South Shetland Islands. It would also confer an exploration advantage worldwide. So deception without oil is a valuable, as valuable as deception with oil. So deception of volcano could be the key to unveiling how rifts form and where the oil is in places where resources are unexploited, Antarctica hence. In an area where the political claims to the Antarctic have long since receded, that should ensure that this frozen corner of the world remains important for some time to come. This is on the conversation, Creative Commons, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.